Good morning, comic book fans. Welcome back to Comics in 5 Minutes. I'm your Evelyn Ho Shorty. And this week there was a few too many things that have come out that I wanted to review, and I really want to review Pac Nadal's Red Goblin by the end of the week. So I have to make a bit of a decision here, and I might read and review Harrower as a bonus one later, but for today, I am looking at Monarch. Um, there's a very good reason why I want to talk about this one more than anything else. And that is Rodney Barnes is a writer of great style um, and unmeasurable talent to do some fantastic books which have top bestseller lists and uh, have speculators going mad for them. But weirdly, in this wee little comic book store that I have in Huddersfield in the United Kingdom, I sold, like, I think three copies of it and nobody really picked it up. And I even went out and got the hardback collections of some of this stuff to really make sure that people could buy it in the best form possible. And I'm constantly frustrated that there appears to be me and one other dude who'd been a fan of him and that was it. So I thought, yeah, let's actually talk about this one because it is good and it's good for various reasons. And I'm hoping I'll be able to come to you to go and check it out. Um, first, we're going to talk about form because uh, this is a really nice uh, split narrative story where you've got three different narrators telling you their experiences. Um, the story doesn't flow in like the same way you'd expect to in terms of time flow. Uh, it does jump backwards and forwards a little bit, but not so much that it's unreadable. It is very easy to follow. They make the distinctions very, very clear indeed. Uh, each of the narrators has their own um, coloured text for the box outs, uh, so it's very easy to follow who's who. Uh, and they do a really good job of um, kind of making it feel like a flowed story, even though it's not necessarily going from the exact same points in time or even the exact same places in space. Um, all in all, a great just basic idea for uh, how we're going to present uh, this comic presented to us. Brilliant. Love that. Straight away. Now I'm going to talk about the comic book itself, because what we're dealing with here is a massive alien invasion. Um, uh, the point where it's like pretty much wiping out all of humanity, and it's seemingly coming from nowhere, and there's no communication, it's not some like uh, long drawn out uh, Independence Day thing where they all move into position to take out... Um, just certain cities a big alien craft comes out of a california and by the end of like the day is murdering people as aliens come out this is a very fast brutal paced story um and again they do not waste any time letting you know this is exactly what you're getting they then flash back a little bit to build up the suspense and uh, do a bit of world building but most of the first sequence happens is a young lady trying to get back into a building which we later learn is a school um as people are just being murdered by aliens around her um and the first, like, full proper death we see is what I seem to be a teacher um, who's beckoning at her and as she charges towards him, his head just gets blown to pieces um, and he's falling backwards. And it's my first moment of, like, genuinely lovely storytelling is she has this moment in panel where she reels back as this guy gets hit by this laser alien death ray. Um, the next panel, she has moved quite far away and he has barely started to fall. I like this because it shows that the, the reeling back, the instant when the thing hit, wasn't her stopping and being shocked. It was more just that instant fraction of time. As she had to go back due to, like, momentum, possibly, or just trying not to get it by the ray. But instantly she carries on. Like, she just wanted to run. Very important to her. Sets up just characteristics really handily for this character. Uh, it does a very good job of letting us know the pacing that we should be expecting, that this is not going to be a slow burn story. And it also looks fantastic. Um, the artist for this one, uh, Alex Lynn, is not somebody I'm that familiar with, but I've already found myself really liking what they're doing for m multiple reasons. Uh, number one, it's that kind of like loose, scratchy artwork that I really like. I'm okay with this not being like fine, detailed, OTT sci-fi kind of stuff, but we still get brilliant shots of uh, cityscapes and uh, outdoor areas where the perspective is absolutely lush and we get fantastic characterization just through hair and uh, it, the city escapes by lighting and things like that it's not perfect there is a moment where we have like a three weeks later kind of thing and our main character Trevon if I remember correctly has an absolutely brilliant haircut like a really really tight fade at the back three weeks later it's still as short now as somebody who shaves their hair like fairly regularly um Three weeks, it's even noticeable on me that it's growing back a little bit, and I'm very, very white and have very grey hair. So it was a little bit of like, um, I felt like a little slight gap in the visual narrative there, um, but it was more than made up for the fact that the aliens look absolutely alien, uh, which is a really nice thing. The spaceship looks intimidating and huge without ever worrying about being sleek and um, uh, fanciful looking. It feels like it's very much um, function before form, uh, and the violence is spectacular and brutal. Um, we also have some great character work in the fact that one of our narrators um, is kind of like the bad guy, he's a school bully who's after Trayvon. Um, for reasons very clearly explained, I don't want to get too much into the actual story, I think it's great to get, get the reveal as you're reading it, but also you get their sense of character through their visuals as well. They are critically injured but feel like they have this anger inside them which is driving them onwards to carry on doing what they set out to do like nothing can stop them 
it's brilliant and brutal and even like the injury detail is nice because this guy has a scar but then he gets injured in a place where the scar is and I really like that kind of um, ongoing idea of his character um, and then we have a twist at the end and I don't want to tell you what this is obviously I don't I want to go and read this comic book and enjoy it but it's fantastic and after the breakneck pace of what's gone on I really want to find out what happens now I, I am like on the edge of my seat moment of wow that was fantastic and now you've left it here and I've got to wait a month to get the rest of it Frustrating, but in a good way. I want to carry on reading. I want to know what's going on. If you like the idea of OTT, um, alien extravaganza in an American high school, I think near Compton, um, then yes, brilliant. Check it out. I, I don't think you'll disappoint. And I absolutely loved it. And I hope this is going to be one that gets people in my small town to pay attention to because it's fantastic. Uh, that's it for me today. Though. I've got at least one more review, maybe an extra bonus one. We'll see how it goes. Make sure you hit the like, subscribe, wherever you're watching this. Um, and tell your friends. Uh, but until I see you all again, look after each other, everyone. Stay safe. Bye.